Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the class of 2025 Blue Coat Ceremony. I'm Dr. Meg Mueller, the current president of the Wisconsin Veterinary Medical Association. And on behalf of the Wisconsin veterinary community, congratulations and welcome to your big day. Mm -hmm. I can say that I think the Wisconsin veterinary community might be even more excited than you are to have us joining you in the near future, and you're one step closer to earning that sacred doctor of veterinary medicine. As we begin today's ceremony, I wanna take a few moments to thank our Blue Coat Ceremony sponsors. Those sponsors recognize the importance of the accomplishments of the class of 2025 and have helped make today possible. Blue Pearl Pet Hospital, Hills Pet Nutrition, Lakefield Veterinary Group, Madison Veterinary Specialists, Pet Vet Care Centers, who's here with us today, thank you, and VCA Animal Hospitals. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Students, you'll find gifts from all of these sponsors along with your program today in the bags that are at your chairs. And we want to give a big thank you to SVA, the 2024 WVMA Vision Sponsor. SVA sponsors the Wisconsin veterinary community all year round to help further enrich the lives of Wisconsin veterinarians. I'd like to take a few moments to introduce a few of my WVMA Board of Director peers who are in attendance with us today as well. President-elect, Dr. Kim Kratt. And District 4 Board Director, Dr. Brian Darkle. We also have many members of the School of Veterinary Medicine present at today's Blue Coat Ceremony, as this is a proud day of accomplishment for the faculty and instructors as well. You will meet many of our SVM partners throughout today's ceremony. And of course, we wanna recognize the wonderful friends and family in the audience and online. All of today's accomplishments happen with the support of every single one of you in this room. Students, we know you have a lot on your plate as you work through the remainder of your education and begin your career. It may seem as though you are too busy to be a part of something like organized veterinary medicine. However, I would argue that the beginning years is when you exactly need this organization. Connections are essential in this industry, and the WVMA is a perfect place to be able to forge those relationships. You are a current member now, and we hope to continue to have you after your veterinary career is over. Again, I wanna thank the class of 2025, and congratulations for having me. You've hit one of the big milestones of navigating your way through a career as a veterinarian. I'm sure plenty of you uh, sitting in those seats today was just like I was 15 years ago, realizing that your childhood dream of becoming a veterinarian is near completion. Some of my earliest memories are growing up on my small dairy farm in western Wisconsin, including time and time again, watching our family veterinarian help taking care of cows and spending time with my dad and knowing that that's what I wanted to do someday. However, life can throw us all off course sometimes. I filled out my VimCast junior year with all of my fellow pre-vet friends, but I didn't make it in. That was okay. I was really looking forward to having my senior year and all the experiences that I know that that would contain. I applied again the next fall, only to receive that fateful letter again that I had not made it in. Sure, I was disappointed, but I knew this was the path for me. I would keep trying. The next year, I moved into a full-time veterinary assistant program for an amazing clinic in Hudson, Wisconsin, and honed in my skills, not just practicing medicine, but also realizing how to run a business, how to be a great boss, and how to be a leader. The spring of 2006, I got that coveted letter in the mail, but I was waitlisted. Number six on the list, okay. This can still happen. I worked hard that summer, soaked up every bit of knowledge that I could, went home on weekends and continued to work on the farm and do as much as I could to further my knowledge. A few short months later, I hit two very monumental life milestones very close together. I got that coveted special letter in the mail that I had made it. I was officially accepted to the UWSVM class of 2010. 
A few short weeks later, I received some of the toughest news I've ever had in my life. My dad was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. I was devastated. Two of the most important things in my entire life were colliding in an extremely drastic way. But my dad said there was no choices to be made. Madison was where I was headed to fulfill my dream. The next 17 months were extremely trying. Driving two and a half hours home, many weekends to help my brothers run the farm, and trying to study when that was definitely not the most important thing on my mind. But thankfully, I had learned relentless resiliency and perseverance, worth ethic, worth work ethic from my farmer father. One of the underlying characteristics that at this time, I didn't know how well it would serve me to be a veterinarian and be a part of this industry. Trust me, it's inside of each and every one of you. It will serve you well as you enter this phenomenal industry. Sure, there absolutely are going to be hardships. I had to walk across this blue coat stage without the most important person in my life in the room to watch me but it was one of the happiest days of my life. I graduated, was able to move back home, and eventually bought into my family area mixed animal practice where I've been for 14 happy years. I get to stand before all of you today as the WVMA president, fulfilling another goal of mine in organized medicine. So don't give up when it's hard. It's going to be hard. There are going to be moments. Lean on all of the amazing people in this room who are sitting next to you and who are filling the rest of the seats. The friendships and bonds that you formed these last three years will serve you well for the rest of your life. I could not have made this journey without my thoughtful, caring classmates, clinicians, professors, and staff at the SVM. Congratulations again to the class of 2025. You're almost there. And don't forget to take care of yourself first before you take care of others and keep moving forward. It's an essential skill to being a veterinarian and it will serve you well for the rest of your career. Thank you. I now invite the Dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine to the stage for the Dean's welcome, Dean Mark Merkel. Thank you, Meg. Uh, I'd first like to lead off with just saying congratulations to the class of 2025. This is an important and amazing day, um, the Blue Coat Ceremony which highlights what a month from now will be the beginning of you becoming a veterinarian in this amazing profession. It's a beautiful day here at the Monona Terrace, both in, in this room as well as outside, and I'd like to acknowledge all of the family, friends, and loved ones that helped you get to this place today 20 plus years um, after you were born. So join me in um, applauding all of your family and friends. So this next year is gonna be, I think, one of the most amazing in your life. All of you have got tremendous experience in the veterinary medical profession already, but this is one of the few times uh, likely that you're gonna have the ability to interface with 70 plus faculty, another 70 or so residents and interns over the course of the next year, and really in a, in a variety of specialties. And what I'd encourage you, regardless of whether you think you wanna go down that path or whether that specialty is really of strong interest to you to take advantage of those two weeks or those four weeks that you're within that experience because it really will be and likely could be one of the few times that you have that opportunity to really be able to reach out to people that are board certified in that specialty and or have expertise in that area. And despite the fact that you're gonna work long hours and be tired, try to take advantage of each and every one of those days. You are gonna be the first class that gets to take advantage of our new hospital. So as of probably within a few weeks of you starting, maybe a couple weeks of you starting your fourth year, we'll move over to the new North Building. And for those that weren't able to have that tour that we had in March, it's gonna be an amazing space to work and learn in. Through the course of your fourth year, we'll finish remodeling the current small wall hospital, but it, I think it still will be uh, an amazing opportunity for you and one that I think you should very much take advantage of. Uh, this it really is the beginning of you preparing yourself to be a veterinarian in the May of, two, in May of 2025. And really try to focus on that as what your goal is. And, and I think in the end, you'll find it to be an amazing experience and an amazing profession. I've been in it for four plus decades. And I can just tell you that whatever field that you choose to pursue, um, you'll find it to be both fulfilling um, whether it's to the patients that you take care of or to the clients that you're serving or to your fellow 
either technicians or veterinarians or staff, uh, one that you'll find will be incredibly, uh, I'd say, uh, life fulfilling you know, for the rest of your lives. So with that, I can't wait to see um, where you end up, um, what you'll do as far as the future leadership of this profession. Lots of things are changing, uh, whether it's corporatization of practices or whether it's the onset of 13 new veterinary schools around the country. Um, but I think you're gonna find it to be an amazing career. And I just congratulate you and wish you all the best. Thank you, Dean Markell. And before we move on, we are going to take a moment to acknowledge that this is Dean Markell's last blue coat ceremony as the Dean of the SVM. The WVMA is proud to have Dean Markell's presence on our board for over a decade. Dean Markell has always expressed the importance of the connection between the SVM, the students, and the Wisconsin veterinary community. The WVMA is one of the few, if not the only state association, where the school believes in this connection so strongly that it pays for all students and faculty to be members of the association. Thank you, Dean Markell, for all you have done to advance veterinary medicine and for all that you have done to advance the class of 2025. I would now like to welcome Dr. Calico Schmidt to the stage for the farewell to the lecture hall's presentation. hard to follow that. Thanks. I'll add my thanks to Dr. Markell for all that he's done for the school and for all of you too. Um, and I have some slides to share with you, so I'm hoping, <laughs> Lindsay, that we can put them up. I promise it's not a PowerPoint. Long. Oh, greetings to families, friends, and colleagues as you share this rather momentous day with our students. Dear veterinary students in the class of 2025, here you are with your classmates in room 2360 with just a few weeks left before you leave the classroom and begin your clinical careers. Thinking about the time you've spent in the classroom is perhaps a little bit like taking a trip down memory lane. As I pondered thoughts and ideas to share with you today, I was trying to think of a metaphor for those memories of your veterinary school journey just thus far. In a way, this stage of your vet school career, as you prepare to leave the classrooms, is a bit like being bird fledglings, ready to leave the nest. When I took a walk on the lakeshore path recently to help clarify my thoughts for you, a sandhill crane walked right across my trail, so I figured that must be a sign. Hopefully you won't mind if I compare your life in veterinary school to that of a sandhill crane chick. Next slide, please. So here you are, <laughs> shortly after arriving at the University of Wisconsin School of Veterinary Medicine. Like a newly hatched chick in the nest, your world was filled with new things. During your first year, you took home boxes filled with bones and learned to distinguish between thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. You donned lab coats and lab gloves to dissect a dog from head to tail. You started to learn a new language, the language of veterinary medicine, filled with strange terms like gubernaculum <laughs> and macrocantharynchus. Instructors helped care for you and your learning, guiding you through lectures, labs, and critical thinking activities. Classmates and lab partners became colleagues and friends. Next slide, please. In your second and third years, you grew and learned you spent time in the classroom learning more of the ology courses, including veterinary immunology, bacteriology, um, virology, pharmacology, ophthalmology, systemic and clinical pathology. Instructors mentored you as you gained knowledge and learned new skills, ranging from the art of tying sutures to performing equine rectal palpations, to diagnosing and treating bovine postparturient hypocalcemia and feline hyperthyroidism. You solved clinical cases and developed clinical reasoning and communication skills. With perhaps a bit of nervousness, you successfully performed anesthesia and surgery on your very first feline patients. You've now spent three years of your life in the lecture halls, labs, and classrooms, 
You've worked hard, faced challenges, and laughed together. Your classmates and instructors in these classrooms have helped shape who you will be as a veterinarian. Altogether, you've completed at least 48 courses and spent countless hours studying, listening to lectures, peering through microscopes, practicing clinical techniques, and solving clinical cases together. You have amassed innumerable course notes and completed a myriad of quizzes, assignments, and exams. Your classroom experience has allowed you to practice, gain knowledge and skills. Just look at how much you have learned. Next slide, please. <laughs> now you're ready to add real patients and real clients to your practicing as you begin your clinical year. On some days, you may feel a bit uncertain as you test your wings. Take care of yourselves and your well-being. We know you can succeed, and you will have caring clinicians, veterinary nurses, faculty, and staff members as ongoing mentors and guides. You should be proud of all you have accomplished. All of us here certainly are. Like proud Crane parents, we love you. And we all send our best wishes to you as you begin your next adventure. So, farewell to the lecture halls. You are ready to fly. Thank you, Dr. Schmidt. It is now time for the Blue Coat presentation. Students, please stand and begin making your way to the stage. At this same time, I would like to once again invite Dean Markell to join me on the stage. Dean Lynn Mackey and Katie Harmelink, please come to the stage to read the names of the class of 2025. Dr. Diego Calderon, Dr. Jessica Ripe, Martinez, and Tina Wall, please join us on the stage to present the students with their coats. As we gather, I am reminded of the continued support that we continue to have of everyone that's around us again. And it's a common theme that I've said many times here today, but recently reminded of that as last evening I was able to spend um, the evening with uh, one of my classmates who I haven't seen in over 10 years. Uh, but the relationships you forge sitting in those two rooms for three years of your life are going to be ones that you're going to have forever. And you will probably not see each other as frequently when you graduate and what that looks like and we all know that that happens but that's the beautiful part about veterinary medicine is that everyone's a phone call a text or a meeting away to be able to see each other and to have those moments and so remember to continue to lean on each other and to take advantage of of those that are around you and to be able to spend that time together because again that really is those relationships and connection points that make all of the difference so that you can have those continued times so remember that that's what you're all here for All right, Sarah Albers. Morgan Anderson. Eleanor Arndt. Kristen Baird.
Christopher Baker. Kayla Bauman. <laughs> Ashley Belgard. Emily Belling. <laughs> Beth Bertacchini. Rebecca Binder. <laughs> Madeline Bodell. Deanna Borkert. <laughs> Hannah Brinkman. Courtney Buser. <laughs> Joanne Cava. Aaron Cooper. <laughs> Amelia Corona. Katie Craig. <laughs> Erica Cromwell. Lauren Cromwell. <laughs> Hannah Dasso.
Jasmine DePledge. Aziza Egger. Maxine Irvin. Sally Farr. Jennifer Fisher. <laughs> Hannah Flatness. Jennifer Freisinger. <laughs> Amanda Jimenez. Alexander Glittenberg. Aaron Gable. Taylor Gordon. <laughs> Sophia Grant Cunard. Nicole Greeley. <laughs> Jacob Graffy. Brenna Gritch. <laughs> Brianne Greisbeer. Courtney Ginther. <laughs> K. 
Kimberly Gums. Carissa Wong. Jenna Hutchinson. Brandon Encroci. Michelle Young. Danielle Kasner. Jack Lapierre. Yolanda Lee. <laughs> Harry Lee. <laughs> Krista Lee Carnita Lincoln Caroline Majinski. Will Markward. Abigail Martinson. <laughs> Emily Massey. Naomi Matthew. <laughs> Katie McCauley. Aaron McMahon. <laughs> Elizabeth Morrow. <laughs> Aaron 
Erica Mueller. Holly Muth. Justin Nelson. <laughs> Brianna Ohm. Ashley Opperman. <laughs> Leah Owens. Chandler Pentecost. <laughs> Ramsey Peterson. Caitlin Quick. <laughs> Jake Rastus. Clarice Rabancos. <laughs> Marissa Rosen. Casey Roth. <laughs> Yujo Sa. Jordan Sandoval. <laughs> Ian Schertzinger. Kate Silverthorne. <laughs> Lauren Cerruti. Taylor Stats. <laughs> K. 
Kaylee Stino. Rita Stock Dahunya. Janice Tan. Joseph Terry. Matthew Vanderpool. <laughs> Ona Van Hattelo. Madison Verlindy. <laughs> Tammy Wong. Caitlin Warren. <laughs> Taylor Weary. Brenna Weatherby. <laughs> Kaylee Wickman. Lindsay Wickman. <laughs> Willow Williams. Rochin Wu. <laughs> Stephanie Yap. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2025. How do those coats feel? Now's the perfect time for your student address. I bring up Erica Mueller to the stage. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very honored to speak at today's ceremony and excited for everything that is to come for our class. This event marks a huge milestone in our veterinary careers that we have worked so hard for. It's the beginning of our journey as student doctors and almost the end of countless exams. Truthfully, I stand before you not sure what sort of wisdom I'm qualified to give as we embark on this next challenge. After all, we've been in this same boat together the past three years. But I hope I can share some motivation as we take a walk down memory lane to see how far we've come. As I'm sure many of you can relate to, I vividly remember receiving my vet school acceptance letter and the tears of joy that followed. I wish we could all show our past selves where we are today, that feeling of sheer excitement and maybe a little anxiety realizing everything in our lives was about to change. We all left the rivers and lakes we were used to and came to Madison, Wisconsin to start chasing waterfalls, and we immediately hit the ground running. They broke out those bone boxes with our anatomy groups, and we met the cadavers we would get to know oh so well. Thank you to our dogs, Tick, Cupcake, Big Mama, and friends. Your gifts to our education have been immeasurable. I confess I was so exhausted and overwhelmed after week one, I didn't know how anyone could possibly do this for four years. It isn't just getting used to the sheer volume of material that was a bit disorienting. We spend all day in windowless lecture halls, the clocks in MD1 are just perpetually broken, and there are random construction drills and bells going off when they're not supposed to. So time is basically an illusion in those brick walls. We also have a lot of fun together there. It feels like just yesterday that we were first years, and looking back, I'm surprised to say one of the most memorable moments for me were the nights just before anatomy exams. The lab was always buzzing approximately 9 p.m. Picture it, people would teach each other questionable mnemonics to remember the 12 cranial nerves, or they'd try to get inside Dr. Plummer's head for what muscle was she going to pin, or if your cadaver was female, you'd ask a different group to refresh you on the opposite reproductive anatomy. And then, like newly hatched sea turtles following the light of the moon to reach the ocean, we would follow our moon, that is, the blue moon bar, after the exam <laughs> the next day. Even though our schedules have gotten crazier every semester, we've somehow managed to master knowing where we need to be and when. We've all been there for each other as we went through the ups and downs of vet school, and personal challenges too. As of this week, we even successfully completed the adventure and team building exercise that is junior surgery. We learned useful things like how to not get bit by a feral cat that wishes you a fiery death, <laughs> and how to tell if the ET tube gets the ever dreaded and delightfully named mucus plug. Also, how to scrub, gown, and glove without disappointing Diego, <laughs> and how to avoid accidentally tissue gluing yourself to a cat. We've been working so hard that we didn't even notice until Dr. Bentley pointed out last month that our class hadn't been keeping up the tradition of a clinic countdown in the lecture hall. I know we're all burnt out, but we've accomplished so much. And now we've made it out the other side to be at our blue coat ceremony today. And that's because we are vet students. We are tenacious, resilient, and just a healthy amount of crazy. I'm still amazed at how quickly we can fill a Google Sheet sign up when there's free food involved. <laughs> Now everything is about to change again. We'll even be moving in as the first class to test drive the beautiful new hospital. But our paths are about to diverge. In fact, this is one of the last time we'll all be in the same room together before graduation. It's hard to believe we are about to enter our fourth and final year. Even though it may not be easy, we have been well prepared by our professors to handle the challenges ahead. Just looking around, there are so many people in our corner cheering us on. No one has all the answers, and as we all know, there's more than one way to spay a cat. Some advice I've been given is that the habits we start building now are going to set us up for the rest of our career in all aspects, from being thorough in patient care, to setting our ethical boundaries, to work-life balance. I'm very proud to be learning alongside this group. I fully believe in us as we start this new journey. After all, look at how far we've come. We are all driven by a passion for helping people and their animals. Of course, we'll make mistakes along the way, but these do not define us. I know we have what it takes to become the dedicated, skilled, and compassionate veterinarians we want to be. Before I hand off the mic, I want to thank all the professors, clinicians, and mentors who have supported and prepared us up to this point, and all those who will be teaching us during our clinical year. And of course, a big thank you to our families, friends, and partners who have loved and supported us through it all. We know it isn't always easy when we come home and our brains stop working after memorizing how to localize neurologic lesions. 
And thanks for letting us back in the house after you ask us how our cow lab went, and we have to explain what rectal palpation is to you. Thank you all for being here today, and I can't wait to see what clinical year and the rest of our careers have in store. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Now I'll have Dr. Ruth Ann Chun address the students who will be entering clinics for their final year of veterinary school. Dr. Chun. Thank you. Thank you. Class of 2025, families, friends, and colleagues, it's an honor to be speaking to you today. Erica, wherever you are, you're a tough act to follow. Um, so I'm lucky to have a topic that is so fabulous. And you all look wonderful, by the way. So class of 2025, welcome to your clinical year. Why is the clinical year so fabulous? you finally get to start practicing veterinary medicine. You get to work with so many animals and so talk to so many clients. You'll start applying all of the knowledge that you've been accumulating to actual clinical patients. You'll start recognizing diseases and disease patterns, and you will finally interact with human beings who are not just your classmates or your instructors. Remember those four core communication skills? open-ended questions, reflective listening, attention to nonverbals, and empathy for others. You get to practice talking with clients and the literally hundreds of personnel who work in the hospital. And in addition to all that, you will be doing all of the other parts of being a veterinarian, such as writing soaps and discharge notes and filling out so many requests for diagnostic tests with a succinct history and case summary. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe that last bit doesn't fill you with giddy anticipation, and there might be a little bit of apprehension or anxiety about the fourth year. Whether or not that's the case for you, let me change gears and share some words of advice. Next slide, please. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. There is a reason why doctors are called practitioners. It's because we are constantly practicing, always working on growing our skill sets. You've learned how to do a physical examination and take a history. Now you get to practice it over and over on real patients with real clients. You've learned how to interpret blood counts and chemistry profiles and how to read a radiograph. The beauty of the fourth year is that you get to practice that over and over in preparation for when you graduate and go out into a practice somewhere. Some apprehension is okay and totally normal, and I recently overheard two current fourth year students looking at the next day's schedule and discussing what cases they wanted to see. The conversation went a little bit like this. Student number one, I haven't seen a regurg patient yet. I'd kind of like to take this one and maybe also the canine CKD case. Student number two, Okay, I really want the canine focal urinary ultrasound since I was on that dog's procedure earlier this week. Student number one. Sounds good. What about the cat with possible FIP? I know student number three said they hadn't seen a cat yet this rotation. Student number two. Sure, we can ask if they want that one or if they want to do the cat with a nasal discharge. And the patient getting dropped off for the balloon procedure for the esophageal stricture will also be really cool. I wonder what your conversations are going to sound like a year from now. <laughs> Next slide. The art of life is a constant readjustment to our surroundings. A fun and challenging part of your fourth year is that you will be on a rotation for two weeks. And then, just as you're getting the hang of how that service works, you get to move on to another one. You might go from radiology to small animal emergency to large animal medicine. The fourth year is an opportunity to be immersed in many different clinical cultures. The flow of patient receiving and diagnostic evaluation and treatment op option discussions on cardiology is very different from how that goes on medical oncology. Listening to heart and lung sounds and doing abdominal palpation is very different process when performed on a cow 
versus a cat versus a chameleon. And these differences are just regarding the size and shape of your patients. I know, and I know you know, that the folks who work on every service and um, the culture of every service is a little different, sometimes a lot different. My advice is to observe, learn, and decide what things you want to weave into who you are and how you interact with others. You can take away more than just whatever particular discipline you're immersed in during a rotation. Next slide. Thank you. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. Sometimes the fourth year can be hard. You might be working with clinicians and nurses who are crazy busy managing really sick patients and managing clients who are so worried and scared about their animal that they might come off as defensive or angry. In the words of Diamond Dallas Page, ask me later who he is, in our personal and professional lives, we are constantly hit with one adversity after the other, most of which we have no control over. But the four things we have total control over is how we react how we adapt, how we breathe, and how we take action. During difficult times, I encourage you to pause and breathe and think about how to respond in a way that does not escalate the situation. There will be times when you might need to advocate for yourself. Please do that. There will be times when you might need to ask an open-ended question to get more information or when you might, might want to reflect back what you are hearing or perceiving to acknowledge the other person's perspective and get clarification. Thinking through situations and responding thoughtfully is another skill that you will be practicing and honing for the rest of your lives. Next slide, please. Thank you. So promise me, you'll always remember you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. Fourth year is a great year. It's a fun year. While you're in it, time may seem to be crawling by, and then before you know it, the year is over and you'll be graduating. There is great joy in helping animals and sending them out the door to go home with their people. And there will no doubt be difficult cases and tough situations. Remember, you're a human being and do not expect perfection. Strive to do well and make sure you give yourself and others some grace. This is the year that you get to start practicing how you will practice as a veterinarian. And you will become a new version of yourselves. Remember that human beings are fallible. It's what makes us better than robots. So please, promise me, you'll always remember that you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. Class of 2025, welcome to your clinical year. Come into the hospital and knock us all out with your awesomeness. Thank you, Dr. Chun. This concludes the class of 2025 Blue Coat Ceremony. Congratulations to each of you for your hard work and your accomplishments. You should be extremely proud of your achievements to make it to this day. And we applaud you as you continue your medical journey in veterinary medicine. Thank you again to all the friends and family who are joining us today and supporting the students. Again, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Blue Pearl Pet Hospital, Hills Pet Nutrition, Lakefield Veterinary Group, Madison Veterinary Specialists, Pet Vet Care, VCA Animal Hospitals, and the 2024 VMA, WVMA Vision Sponsor, SVA. Will the class of 2025 please rise? The class of 2025 will now make their way to the stage for a class photo. We ask that the family and friends please stay seated
I know that you want to get that best picture as well, but trust us, we have professionals for that. So please stay seated until we have the pictures finished, and then we can take advantage of the beautiful uh, surroundings that we have uh, around us. All students will receive digital copies of the class photo as well. So please wait to find your student until after we're finished with pictures. Once the students have all exited, family and friends, please join us in the reception area to the left, and again, please feel free to take pictures outside. Congratulations, thank you all for joining us, and welcome to the profession. <laughs>